Good evening, everyone. My name is Ali Gandhi. I am the CEO of uh, Varco Leke. Today we have uh, Dr. Tapish Shahu, the head of the Department of Vascular and Endovascular Science, Manipal Group of Hospital. Uh, he also happens to be uh, the chief medical advisor for Varco Leg Care. Uh, Dr. Tapish Shahu, thanks for taking your time for this uh, for, for the session. Uh, welcome, welcome here, and welcome all our participants today. Um, if you could just give a formal introduction about yourself and then, um, you know, going on to moving on to discussing about, um, you know, chronic venous insufficiency, what really varicose veins is and, um, you know, what, what are the prevention, preventive measures uh, one can take as well as, um, you know, the treatment, the standard uh, line of treatments which are available today uh, and how uh, Varco Leg Care at large can also uh, help uh, at varicose veins at different stages. Uh, so, so welcome here, Dr. Tapish Shahu. Uh, over to you uh, to take this live session forward. So, uh, uh, thank you, Vicky. Thank you, uh, everyone, for joining today on a Saturday evening. And it's a pleasure to be talking to you all as far as the introduction goes. I'd just like to introduce myself as a vascular specialist. I cut the veins for a living, I repair them, and I'm a human plumber for that matter. I help the department, but uh, and also in officiating as the Secretary of Vascular Society of India. That is an additional responsibility, but here we are to talk about a very common problem related to the veins of the body, which are mostly visible on the legs, which is very, uh, you know, common terminology, a household terminology, very close veins. Now, uh, your uh, company also happens to have this product known as Varco, which is sounding similar to this problem, but let's just talk about the problem first and then we talk about the evidence of the management of this problem. So, uh, I'll start my presentation by going into my slides and then we will be discussing the questions and whatever are the further queries or dilemmas related to this problem, diagnosis or treatment. Okay. So first I'd like to talk about the definition of this common problem that what exactly is meant by varicose that we uh, hear, see and talk about. It's that when the veins become a little longish, tortuous, dilated than normal, it is known as varicose. So they are normal veins which have gone a little defunct and they have increased in their length and diameter and now they are visible under the skin. These are the superficial veins which are which is connected to the deep system but essentially this is a superficial venous system and there is pooling of blood in the lower extremity. They also may be visible in the upper limb but mostly due to the effect of gravity it is present in the lower limb. How do they develop? The veins are not as strong as the arteries because arteries have to have higher pressure so they are thicker walled. Veins are thinner walled. They are easily descended by chronic pooling of blood when the column of blood exerts little pressure. The size of the veins increases and this distension causes the reduced effectiveness of one way venous valves that actually are meant to let only blood flow from the feet to the heart. But when these valves become defunct, there is a two-way flow which is known as a reflux. And these valves are present in the lumen that should not normally allow the backflow. So when these valves become incompetent, these valves are present at various uh, levels, but the, the, the main valve is present at the junction of the sephenofemoral junction of the long sephenous vein where it joins the femoral vein into the deep system. So when this valve becomes dysfunctional or incompetent, it leads to a reflux which causes increased pressure and the veins dilate or become very cold. So these also work in conjunction with the skeletal muscles in the leg, which actually is known as the peripheral heart. So this is the peripheral heart that when you walk, when you walk, this squeezes the blood out of the veins up to your heart 
and is augmented is the the valvular function is helped by the pumping so when you actually uh, you know uh, push and pull when you when you flex and extend your ankle your calf this the gastrocnemius gastrocnemius is activated which is the, uh, the the god has given us one heart here in the chest and the other heart there in the leg to, for the for the veins to pro function properly so what happens is that gravity is constantly playing on us and the pressure at the ankle if the valves are competent it goes to 50 if they are incompetent it may rise up to 200 to up to 300 mm of water at the ankle because of this reflux and the normally the valves should break the column into various small parts of of uh, liquid that is the blood so the pressure at the ankle should not be as increased but when you see that all walls are destroyed it's just one simple pipe with column of blood with a uh, gravity playing its part at the ankle in the gaiters area which leads to the vein becoming more prominent and more uh, tortuous so this is actually how they are connected there is a main system which is the deep venous system and the superficial is what goes through the skin so there is there are perforators at various levels joining the system and these superficial and deep veins are actually going through the deep veins are going through the muscle pump in between them and superficial venous system is also activated by proper uh, uh, muscle contraction so this essentially helps so let's say this how to prevent varicose from happening is that you should walk this helps with the pumping of blood to your heart and also if you uh, wear some special garments it augments it more so this system that you see here this h let me decipher it for you that the normal age from from your uh, toes to your heart abnormal age from your groin back towards the toes so this is what is the normal and abnormal that is the basis of the varicose veins so the causes that people ask that sir i have this varicose veins at a younger age people have at a uh, older age why is it that i am more predisposed why is it that i have this before anybody else or why am i the you know person to be uh, subjected to a surgery why i think that i only have this very cold pain so we talk about causes that it is divided into two which is a primary and a secondary cause the primary cause is congenital and normally that is the veins are genetically weak everywhere they are visible everywhere the big veins and this is basically the connective to the veins the secondary causes are that okay you were born okay your tissues are okay but then there is some kind of raise in abdominal pressure or the pressure is high in the superficial or deep system like when there is pregnancy is going on and the fetus is increasing in size and weight there is more uh, pressure on the uh, iliac veins in the abdomen if you have if some person has a mass like a football pressing on the pipe then obviously the leg will have more pressure a cyclic in liver prop in liver problems or various other places where cyclic can occur in the stomach that is causing actually the external column of fluid is causing pressure on the veins which is increasing the pressure in the leg obesity is a very important cause that you have a body which is meant to be 60 to 70 kg and you have a body which is now 120 kg so where does the weight exert the, the obesity exerts its pressure it's on the leg vein constipation well a person who is predisposed to constipation he will exert more pressure constipation leads to hemorrhoids which is also vein thrombosis of leg veins that previously a patient has had some kind of dvt so the leg the deep system has gone defunct and the complete uh circulation is going to the superficial venous system which will cause it to become defunct when long term long periods of standing like policemen like soldiers like teachers like doctors like people who work more in the kitchen they are also predisposed because it, it, it is an occupation hazard that their calf is actually having more venous blood pooling in them and the diameter is increasing and then the valvular function goes for a cause so the most common manifestation people say that is this symptom related to varicose or is this related to something else why does it come to 
the attention of the people, of the patients, of relatives, of doctors is that people have dull aching pain, specifically we call it night cramps, dependent edema, one of the causes, not just all swellings are not venous, but when, when people are having their legs expanded because of huge flux, the, the blood pools in the ankle and their foot and it causes edema. Their appearance through the skin is unsightly, that is, for this cosmetic problem of green, green colored spider veins, human dysplasia, or big, big uh, serpentine pipes that are seen under the skin. People find it uncomfortable to wear dresses because they feel that people will you know, notice it and ask what is happening or it, it's not very uh, cosmetically sound. Or it may be associated with a varicose seed or inguinal hernia that is component of pelvic congestion syndrome wherein the veins of the scrotum are also enlarged or inguinal hernia wherein the contents are exerting pressure in the groin. So, these are the common manifestations of pathology of, of the varicose veins. Now, uh, comes the treatment part that okay, if person has this, if person is uh, suffering from this, what to do? So, first is that you ask the patient to get a Doppler done, a colored Doppler, because a Doppler is one thing which will tell you regarding the valvular function, which will tell you regarding how the blood is flowing, how much is the diameter, are there any clots in the veins, is the veins having any phlebitis, which is inflammation of the vein wall, or the blood is flowing properly from below upwards. So then if the symptoms are most likely related to some other cause, not related to very close pain. But if there is a reflux, if there is a documented incompetence, then you have to subject them to some kind of uh, uh, treatment option that you have to discuss with the patient. The venous tests are multiple. This is the gold standard, which is done these days in 15 years before, there were more of clinical tests because the doctors were not so readily available. So it was a clinical diagnosis where there was perfect test, modified clinical work test, various tests to see whether the valves are competent or incompetent, but they are surrogate. You have to demonstrate a valvular incompetence on a doctor. So to talk about other treatment, uh, uh, the diagnostic modalities, you have a CT venogram sometimes which is combined with the Doppler, but it does not suggest a reflux. It, it is done in cases where you are having deep venous reflux. You want to see more about the iliac vein status. Sometimes you have to look for a recanalized DVT if the person has had a deep venous thrombosis before. You may need to see, look for the deep venous status. Now, we will combine a Doppler with a CT venogram, not just a CT will not tell you about varicose vein. Other tests are the plethysmograph, which is a air plethysmograph, a strain plethysmograph, which actually tells you about the venous reflux signs, like a VRT. So I was talking about reflux. So the reflux is graded as per the time taken for the valve to close or the reflux grade is done on a VRT. That you say that okay, this VRT is showing a graph which is having a reflux. So these are adjuncts to a doctor, not just for diagnosis. And if you talk about monitoring, so Monitoring, well, yes, Doppler is still the gold standard, but we are in pre-op and post-op, whether the symptoms will improve objectively is based on a VRT, that is the VRT uh, has improved, uh, the, the cutoff has improved, then there are more chances that the uh, symptoms of the patient which were related to the varicose will improve. So those are the adjunct tests to the doctor. So uh, we go ahead, what all options are available for patients who have been diagnosed with whatever grades of varicose that SIAC classification is there. So grade 1 to grade 6 we have, grade 1 is actually a, a drilling dictation of the spider veins, grade 2 is visible veins, grade 3 is edema. So as we go down, we, 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 we find that various grades, various symptoms need various kind of tailor-made uh, treatment for these patients. The first line of treatment always for patients who have either uh, cosmetic problems or functional problems is are actually the plant extract, which is the flavonoids, natural flavonoids, or topical applications like we have the phyto oils, which actually help with the, uh, you know, it makes the vein more healthy. 
So there are gap junctions in between the cells of the veins. So there is a seepage which actually causes the discoloration of the skin at the gator's area. So these treatment modalities help also with reducing the symptoms and also improve the cosmesis of the skin if these are applied. In valvular incompetence, they may not treat the valvular incompetence, but they may help in treatment.